Our message this morning is entitled, Where is my room? Where is my room? Where is my room? Mark chapter 14, verse 12 to 16. Where is my room? Mark chapter 14, verse 12 to 16. Where is my room? Question mark. Where is my room? The Bible says in verse 12 of Mark chapter 14 that on the first day of the festival of unleavened bread, Passover, when it was customary to sacrifice the Passover lamb, Jesus' disciples asked him, where do you want us to go and make preparations for you to eat the Passover? Verse 13. So he sent two of his disciples telling them, go into the city and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him. Verse 14. Read verse 14 keenly. Say to the owner of the house as he enters the house. The teacher asks, where is my guest room? Our message this morning is, where is my room? And it continues to say, where is my guest room? Where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? Verse 15, he will show you a large room upstairs, furnished and ready. Make preparation for us there. Verse 16, the disciples left, went into the city, and found things just as Jesus had told them. So they prepared the Passover. Our message this morning is entitled, Where is my room? Jesus sent disciples to ask the owner of the house this simple but critical question, Where is my room? Jesus has sent us, the church, to this day, ask you and ask each other this simple but critical question. Where is the Lord's room? It is God posing this question to me. God is asking me, your chaplain, where is my room? God is posing this question to you, university people. Where is my room? You see, you have a room where you cook and store food in your house. But Jesus is asking, where is my room? You have a room where you sleep and you have invested in making it comfortable. But Jesus is asking this morning, where is my room? You have a room set aside for laundry, for sitting to socialize, sitting room for studying library, for basking in the sun, for visiting guests to, to use. And Jesus is asking this morning, where is my room? Our entire life baraton is made of rooms. We have a room for fun. We have a room for politics. We have a room for academic progress, for social life, for loved ones, for money, for health. But there is a room many of us are missing. And the Lord wants to know if as you allocated rooms to many things, you remembered to allocate him a room. And so he's asking this morning, where is my room? We have room for social media. What about the Lord's room? We have room for rest and holiday. What about the Lord's room? We have room to watch football and surf the net around humanities. It is raining, it is cold, it is drizzling, and we are holding our phones. We are surfing. 
We can stand up and watch a soccer game for 90 minutes without feeling need to sit down, but cannot stand long enough for a prayer or a song that is hardly three minutes. And so the Lord is saying, you have room for soccer. You have room for surfing internet. Where is my room? We have room to jog and pursue a healthful life. We have room for eight glasses of tasteless water. We have room for bitter stuff in the name of health. But Lord is asking, where is my room? Where is my room? What about the Lord's room? We have room to watch news and discuss politics. What about the Lord's room? Where is my room? Is the Lord's question this morning. Listen, brothers and sisters, if you don't have a room for me, it's because you never thought about me. If while allocating rooms in your life, you never allocated a room for the Lord, it's because you never thought about him. It's because you don't value him. It's because you don't think about him. It's because you don't want him in your life. It's because you don't have a relationship with him if you don't have a room for him. And so, as you are allocating room for things in your life, as you allow a new boyfriend in your life, as you allow a new girlfriend in your life, God is asking, where is my room? Second Kings chapter 4, verse 8 to 10. The Bible says, One day Elisha went to Shunem. Second Kings chapter 4, verse 8 to 10. One day Elisha went to Shunem, and a well to do woman was there who urged him to stay for a meal. So whenever he came by, he stopped there to eat. Any time Elisha was in Shunem, he stopped by this woman's place and ate. Verse 9. This woman said to her husband, I know that this man who often comes our way is a holy man of God. Verse 10. Let us make a small what? Hey, I can't hear you. Let us make a small what? Room. Let us make a small room on the roof and put in it a bed and a table and a chair and a lamp. Then he can stay there wherever he comes to us. The Shunammite woman found the presence of prophet Elisha to be so valuable and she set aside a room for him in her home. Is God important to you enough for you to create room for him? Have you set aside a room for the Lord? She created room and her barrenness ended. Hallelujah. This lady did not have a child, but because she created room for the Lord, because she created room for the Lord, we are told that Elisha called the woman one day and said, what can I do for you? And the woman said, nothing. And Gehazi, the servant of Elisha, said, she doesn't have a child. And Elisha said, you have been so kind to, to me to create a room for me. May God grant you a child, same time next year, baby boy. She created room, and the Lord ended her barrenness. And so the Lord is speaking to us, who are barren in many ways. Where is my room? We are barren of GPA. It has never risen beyond 2.1. Now you are aiming that God, at least by the time I graduate, let it be just enough to cross the line that the Senate wants for graduation. And the Lord is asking you, where is my room? Some of us are barren of happiness. We don't know a single happy day. We are not happy in school. We are not happy at work. We are not happy at home. We are not happy anywhere. 
and the Lord is looking at you and asking, where is my room? She created room and her barrenness ended. But you know, after that, the same child grew up and died. And she carried that child and took the child to that room that was allocated to Elisha and put that child on the bed allocated to Elisha. And she went to get Elisha. And in that room, that child received life. Brothers and sisters, where is that room in your life? When that child dies, which room will you take that child? To the Facebook room? And say, oh guys, I'm going through a difficult time. The Facebook room has never helped anyone. Even when you change your status from in a relationship to it is complicated, who cares? <laughs> the best response they will do is to put a thumbs up. It's complicated? Thumbs up. <laughs> That's cool. You are going through a hard time. We like it. You have 200 likes for your hard time. <laughs> she created room, and when death came, the crisis was resolved because there was a room for the Lord. And now the Lord is asking you, where is my room? This room is important for you and me, not for the Lord. The person who benefits from creating the room for the Lord is me, not the Lord. Is you, not the Lord. When the Shunammite woman told the husband, let us make a room for the servant of God, who benefited? Was it the servant of God? No. It was the family that created room. In Luke chapter 2 verse 7, when Jesus was born, there was no room for him. <laughs> and she gave birth to her firstborn, that's Mary, a son. She wrapped him in clothes and placed him in a manger because there was no room available for him. At the birth of Jesus, Jesus looked for a room through his parents and found no room. There are people who need to be born. And Jesus is looking for room so that he can be born in their lives through baptism next Sabbath. Will he find room or will he be disappointed like at the time of his birth? Where is my room? At his death, Luke chapter 22, verse 7 to 13, he looked for room. The Bible says, then came the day of unleavened bread. We have read that. Verse 8, Jesus sent Peter and John, go make preparations. Verse 9, where do we go? Verse 10, he replied, as you enter the city, you will see a man carrying a jar of water. Verse 11, say to the owner of the house, the teacher asks, where is my room? Where I may eat the Passover with my disciples. And what does the Bible say? He will show you a large room. Listen, Baraton, the room for the Lord is not a tiny corner space of your life. It must be a large room. Some of us give the Lord five seconds of prayer for food. And we mumble a prayer before we sleep. You do everything, you chat with everyone, tell everybody good night, you wind up, wind up, put everything aside. Then you say, Lord, as I sleep, bless me, amen. You give God a small corner a small corner. What are you giving the Lord? A small corner in your life. A small corner in your life. Corner in your life. Small. You have even recited a prayer for food. That's why after praying, if something delays, you say, did we pray? By the way, did we pray? Why? Because it's a recitation. Small corner. But the room for the Lord, Jesus said, when you meet that man, he will show you a large room. What the Lord wants in our life is a large room. And Baraton has created a large room for the Lord, this church. Hallelujah. And it has created a large room by every evening, 6 to 7, it is worship time. 
Any class that ever goes on between six and seven has no blessing in the past, present, and future. Six to seven is dedicated to the Lord in Baraton for years that Baraton has been here. A large room for the Lord. Then somebody says, oh, we don't want worship. What's wrong with you? When we get into a crisis, which room will we turn to? This room is important for us because this is where we run to when there is a crisis. This is where we go to when we need our blessing. This is our refuge. This room must stay. I thought believers are here to say amen. amen. Brothers and sisters, the Lord wants what size of a room? A large room. We will not even entertain the thought of some people who think they are very wise to say, why don't we have worship only on Wednesday, Friday, and Sabbath? How did you select those days? Then wh what do we do with the Lord on the other days? He said he wants what size of a room? Large room. Then he says, upstairs. What did he say? Upstairs. That is a priority. He must be at the top. Jesus was not going to take any room on the basement there on some... No, he said, large upstairs. I see some of you, when it's time to come to church, you hang out there because you want to go upstairs. It's understandable. Where you come from, there are no churches with upstairs. Are we together? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and I, I normally tell the deacons, allow them to go where? Upstairs, at least to have an experience they may never have again in life. Are we together? <laughs> to, I mean, to worship upstairs. Are we together? <laughs> and the Lord says, I also want where? Upstairs. upstairs. At his death, he looked for a room through his disciples, and lucky enough, he, he found it. What does the church say? In Revelation chapter 3, verse 20, Revelation chapter 3, verse 20, before he returns the second time, he is looking for room. He says, here I am, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person and they with me. Jesus says, I'm out there, I have no room. And I'm going around knocking. If anyone hears me knocking, if anyone hears me calling and they open and give me room, then I will commune with them. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus, before he returns to the end of the world, and before he comes to make nonsense of our valuables, and what we consider important is requesting that we make room for him. You know, brothers and sisters, everything that is important today will not be important when Jesus comes. None of us is flying to heaven with their certificates. While we are working very hard for certificates, we are not taking them up. While we mind so much how we look like when we dress, we shall be changed and given new clothes when we go there. So you don't need to spare a lot of your clothes for that journey. You don't need them. And so the coming of Jesus will devalue the many things we value. Will make nonsense of a lot of effort that we are putting. Brothers and sisters, he says just create room for me. Because that room will go beyond this life. Hallelujah. He wants room for communion, holy communion with you. That is why he is asking for room. If you don't have room for him, you have no relationship with him, and you have hopeless life today and in future. That is why for your own good, not his, he asks for a room in your life. Where is my room? Jesus sent disciples and said, go and look for a certain person. When you meet that person, just ask, where is my room? I want to have communion. Where is my room? And God has sent us today to Baraton, and the question is the same. Where is what? My room. Will you grant him room during this communion? You grant him room by participating in the Holy Communion. Will you grant him room? 
when you participate in this Holy Communion, you are granting him the room. Will you grant him the room? If you are giving him room, you will go and wash one another's feet and return here so that we break bread together, so that we share the cup together. If you are granting him room. Men and women will wash their feet separately at the humanities building. You will be directed by deacons. Married couples, married couples, not come we stay couples, married couples, married couples, legally married and recognized by the church couples will go to the chaplain's boardroom and wash one another's feet. If, if you are granting him room. Because the question he has just sent this morning is where is my room? And the response is to participate in the communion. You are free to walk away. Nobody will notice. I will be behind this. I will not see you. But the response is to him. Where is my room? This communion is open for Adventists and non-Adventists. The condition is if you believe in Jesus. You need to participate in foot washing, in breaking the bread, and drinking from that cup. Where is my room? You will respond by either participating or not participating. Jesus said to us, go to Baraton. You will find people working at the university. You will find people studying at the university. You will find people worshiping at the university. Just ask them, where is my room? And those who believe in me will participate in the communion. May the Lord bless us so much. I will pray, and after prayer,